Previous Sunday, you know, we were talking about in Acts chapter 9. We are still in Acts chapter 9. And this is the third Sunday we are in Acts chapter 9. And you might be wondering, Prakash, why are you taking such a long time to just complete one chapter? I don't know. There's so much to learn. And my goal is to preach the whole Bible. I don't know how long that will take. Hopefully some of us will be alive. So last time we were talking about in Acts chapter 9 about transformation is costly. And we saw how Saul transformed. But it was not easy because once he changed, he had to face persecution from his very own people, the Jews. So just because you are changing doesn't mean everyone is excited about the changes you're making. But also we learn from Barnabas that he was someone who always believed in people and encouraged people. And that was one of our challenge is to be a Barnabas wherever we are, right? People should feel encouraged being around you. Now, in Acts chapter 9, verse 32 to 40, the last part of the chapter, Luke, the author, now focuses from Paul and he focuses on Peter now. And the title this morning is called, We All Have Something to Contribute. Amen? So in verse 32 of Acts chapter 9, as Peter traveled about the country, he went to visit the Lord's people who lived in Lydda. Now, where is Lydda? There's a map. So if you notice, Jerusalem, this is where the church is. And so Peter kept traveling all over these places and reached over here. It's around 55 kilometers from Jerusalem. And this is basically where, if you remember, uh, Philip, remember the Ethiopian eunuch? Then he reached over here. And Philip was someone who kept preaching all over this place, till Caesarea. And it looked like that Peter was following up and traveling in the same place, encouraging all the new disciples that, you know, Philip had preached to. And now it mentions over here in verse, he went to visit the Lord's people. Now in some of our translation, it says he went to visit the saints who lived in Lydda. Now sometimes when we think about the word saint, there's a different picture that comes to our mind. You know, I come from a Catholic background. And so as a Catholic, we were supposed to worship many different saints. So who are the saints? According to the Catholic uh, beliefs, the saint is the one who dies. And after many years, when people pray, they are supposed to do, perform some miracles. I think so three miracles they're supposed to perform. And then the Pope from Rome will, you know, say that this person is saint. And I believe... They believe Mother Teresa is also a saint. Saint basically means someone is set apart to be holy. That means every disciple is set apart to be holy. So every one of us can be called a saint. I have Saint Peter standing next to me. <laughs> and so when, when someone is talking about praying to the saints, what does that mean? It means you're praying to someone else apart from Jesus which is wrong, which is not uh, biblical. Because in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, they say, it says that there is only one mediator between God and man, and that is Christ Jesus. So every one of us are a saint in God's eyes, because we are all set apart to be holy. So let's read verse 33 to 34. What happens as Peter comes over here, and uh, what does he find? So as Peter travels around, he comes to this place called Ly uh, Lydda, and a man named Aeneas, who is paralyzed and bedridden for eight years, and Peter, you know, ex exactly what Jesus did when Jesus was there. Remember the paralytic, the friends brought him, and Jesus, that's exactly what Peter did over here, and raised him up. He you know, told him to get up, and this man got up. Who performed this miracle? Peter. And why was Peter able to perform this? Because he was an apostle. He was the one who was there when the Holy Spirit came upon all the apostles and they were given that power or the strength to do miracle to able to forcefully advance God's kingdom. And in verse 35 it says that when people saw this, the Bible says that they were so inspired that they, they turned back to God. They believed in the message because at that point of time, 
There was no written word of God like, the, like we have the scriptures. So for them to know that was Peter really from God and his message was really true, the sign confirmed that he was sent from God. So in verse 36 it says uh, in Joppa there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. Now I know the sisters, you had a Women's Day message on this, so I'm not going to preach the whole thing on that. But now the, the, the thing moves from Elijah to Joppa. That is again around 20 kilometers. And what was the reputation she had in that local congregation? She was always doing good and helping the poor. That was her reputation in the church. So when you're always doing what is good and when you're always generous, guess what? You are loved by people. You're respected by people, right? Now, can that be said about us? That so-and-so is always doing good and helping the needy. Or what else can be said about us? So-and-so is always gossiping. Is that what people who knows you will say? Or so-and-so is always assuming things about others. Always accusing. Always finding faults in others. Always judging others. Always complaining and grumbling. Always making excuses. Always looks very unhappy. And if we have this reputation, guess what? No one would want to be around us. And if we have that reputation and if we die, no one would want us to be alive again. Like with Dorka, with Tabitha, they, they missed the so much. They, they, you know, they wanted her to be alive. But if we had, does not have that reputation, you know, people will think, let him stay dead. Good riddance. Now, why should we do what is good? Or why should we do what is right? Because many times we have this thing that if I do what is right, then others will do what is right and that will motivate me to do what is right. But if I do what is right all the time, then others will take advantage of me. So I need to be cautious. We got to do what is right because it is right. Bottom line, irrespective of what other people say or does. Our response should not be based on others. And a lot of time we do that, even in a marriage. If other person responds right, I will respond right. So is doing good or you doing right, is that an option? What do you think? The answer is yes and no. Because if you are not a disciple of Jesus, then you have an option. You don't have to do it. But if you are a disciple of Jesus, then we have no option. Because we are called to imitate Jesus. In James chapter 4, verse 17, the Bible says, James says, if anyone then knows the good that they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. You might say, okay, bro, I don't know what is good. So I'm excused. Ignorance is no excuse. We can't use that excuse that, oh, I do not know. That's the reason why God gave us the scripture to read, to get to know his will in our lives. Because if, if ignorance was a good excuse, then the Bible cannot be called the good news. Why is that? Because once you read the Bible, your excuse is gone. Now you are supposed to do what you, what you read in the scriptures. Then it becomes a bad news. Because once you read it, your excuse is gone. Let's look at what happens. Verse 37 and 38. So Tapita, the one who is known to do always good, and helping the, the, the poor and the needy, she became sick and died. And you know, when you read this, you say, why does bad thing happen to good people? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever questioned that? Why does bad thing happen to good people? And there is no answer to that, except that it is God's will. And so disciples, they washed her body, prepared a burial. And when they heard that, you know, Peter was close by. The, the Bible said they sent the word, they in fact sent two men, to urge him, please come quickly. And maybe they heard that, you know, this disciple Aeneas was paralyzed. Peter was able to heal. Maybe he can raise Tabitha from, from her, her death. Yeah. Or maybe they just felt like, you know, they called Peter to just comfort all the disciples 
who were grieving the loss of Dorcas. Peter obliged because in verse 39 and uh, 39 and 40, yeah, 39 it says, Peter went with them and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows have stood around crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still alive with them. So the widows, as soon as Peter came, they took and they were displaying all the good work of Dorcas while she was alive. You know, they were crying. It looked like they really missed Dorcas. Was 40 and 41. And I don't think so. Peter went there with the intention of raising Dorcas up. But when, he, I'm sure when he saw the impact Dorcas had, the saw that how much the people missed her, maybe there's something they told her to revive her, to bring her back to life. And so Peter sent all of them out. He got down on his knees and prayed and then told the dead woman, Tabitha, get up. And she opened her eyes. Does this remind you of another incident that someone else did it also? Hmm. Who did that? Jesus. And who was the woman? Sorry? The 12 year old girl. Yeah. Zyrus' daughter. So again, we see over here, Peter is imitating his master. When he, the three years that he walked with Jesus, what he saw, now he's doing the same thing when he's all alone. Why did Peter raise Dorcas up? I'm sure it wasn't for Dorcas's sake because she was actually in a better place, right? Because as a disciple, once you die, you have something to look forward to an eternity in heaven, which is much better than being on this earth. Now she was raised up for the sake of others. That is something that we got to always remember, brothers and sisters, is our life needs to be a blessing to others. See, we can't live our life just for ourselves. And for that was something that people appreciated, the darkest is she did what was good and helped others, lived for others, impacted others. A few thought as we conclude over here is, you know, we, see two, we saw two miracles over here this morning, right? We saw Aeneas who was healed from being paralyzed from his paralysis, and then we saw Tabitha raised from the dead. And sometimes you know we can have this thought that if I just pray hard, if I just really believe with all my heart, then you know whatever I pray for, or my loved one will be healed from the sickness, or if they are suffering from a serious cancer, you know they will be healed, and we have that belief. And then when that does not happen, when your prayers are not answered, you know, two things can, you know, you might think of. Either number one is, you know, maybe I did not have enough faith. Or you might also think that maybe I'm not good enough. I'm not holy enough for God to answer my prayers. And it both is. of them are wrong. Right? And the reason why I'm telling you this, is, why am I saying this is because the fact that the God raised darkness from dead Yet Stephen, remember Stephen? What happened to him? He was stoned to death. Later on, James, the brother of John, he was martyred. Now, isn't, wasn't Stephen and James more important in Dorcas? If they were alive, they could have done so much than Dorcas could do. And yet what we notice over here is God chose Stephen and James not to be raised up, wanted Dorcas to be raised up. You understand what I'm trying to say? It is not that someone is more important, you know, it is God's will for some to live longer and some to live not that long. And we should be okay with that. Amen? So yes, we need to have faith. Yes, we need to pray. But at the end of the day, we got to learn to surrender to God's will. In verse 42, as we close, 42 and 43, of course, when again, when people heard what happened in Joppa, more people believed in God. And when I think about this, this is, if I was God, I wouldn't have written the script like this. I would have had a Stephen, I want him to be alive, he can do more, Dorcas, great, I love you, but your time is up. Mm -hmm. That would be my story if I was God. But if you look at God's will, Stephen's death, ex the, the gospel exploded. Because people went all over the place and Paul could not control it. Well, Dorcas, you know, maybe the disciples, they were young, they needed encouragement. She was a wonderful woman. 
and the people God felt like they needed a little bit more time to be encouraged as more people believed in, uh, believed in the in God in the in Lord and Jesus verse 43 says Peter decided to stay in Joppa so that he could continue to preach the gospel to the people over there where did he stay in whose house I'm under now this is something that you got to understand is if you're a Jew at that point of time you wouldn't be touching or staying in anybody's house who works with dead animals especially unclean animals right because the Jewish thing is that if you touch a dead animal you become unclean it's a very simple line but we miss out on big thing because according to the law of that time if you are a tanner that means you're working with dead animals skill you're supposed to live at least 75 feet outside the village because you're constantly in touch with dead animals and you're unclean so you're not only really allowed to on the outskirts of the village outside the village 75 feet who else was treated that way lepers in that day if you had leprosy then you couldn't stay in the village you had to be outside the village and so in a way Simon the Tanner was the outcast of the society and yet we see Peter staying with him of all the places he decided to stay with Simon the Tanner and so we see that Peter is becoming less and less concerned about the Jewish traditions and slowly you know God is opening his heart to become open-minded because in the next chapter guess where is God is sending him to Cornelius and so God is slowly working in his heart to prepare him for the next big step so in conclusion what did we learn today you know we all have something to contribute no matter who you are no matter what you do whatever gifts and talents you have we all can contribute Let's be like Dorcas, who always was doing what is good and taking care of the needy. Okay, let us make a decision to always do what is right, even when it is hard and difficult. Peter, who always made sure to preach the gospel wherever he went. And that is something that we got to do. Wherever we go, God gives us an opportunity to share the gospel. Let us take every opportunity to do that. And nothing much is said about Simon the Tanner, but what we see about him is him opening his door and offering hospitality to Peter so that Peter could continue to work and preach the gospel in Joppa. We all can serve. Amen.